Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone and wish you a very happy Ramadan. It is such a pleasure for me to get invited by Skylife, Dr. Rafiq and entire panelist. It's really a pleasure to present my topic in front of you. Why I have selected this topic, how to read MRI of lumbar spine from physio point of view. Before I ask further, let me ask you how much you are comfortable. So, you know, in between, you will be getting the poles also in this because it is going to be two way communication. In between, I'll be asking questions from you and you need to answer those questions. So I understand what level you are, we are dealing with each other and how much you are understanding. And I will speak slowly so you can understand. So in between, I'll be asking question and you have to mark the answer and then we will declare the result also. So here is the first question coming on your screen. How comfortable are you in interpreting a MRI? How much you can read the MRI film? You can select any one option, very comfortable, comfortable, or no idea at all. You can select anyone. So I know the level of the class I need to start with. Raise my mic. Okay, we did chalukarado. Koi baat nahi. Okay. So eight percent says they are very comfortable, and sixty-one percent says they are comfortable, and thirty-one percent says no idea at all. So those who say is they are comfortable <laughs> and very comfortable. Now my question from them is. Did you know just reading or Googling MI report can be misleading? Yes. If you're just going through the, if you're just reading the MRI film or if you're just reading the MRI report or Googling it, you are going to the internet and checking what is there. It could be misleading. This is very interesting study. Before I start my presentation, I would like to share. This is a systematic review by Brinjikji et al, which was published in American Journal of Neuroradiology. And this is a systematic review where they included 33 studies and there were 3,910 participants included in these 33 studies. And all those 3,900 participants were asymptomatic, means they were not having any pain. And the results were very surprising. They were having no pain, no symptom. Still, at the age of 40 years, 50% of the participants were having disc bulge. Okay, 50% people had disc bulge at the age of 40 years and they were all asymptomatic, no pain, no symptom. And then at the age of 50 years, it was 60% people having disc bulge. When they talked about disc degeneration, at the age of 40 years, 68% people had disc degeneration, aging process of the disc, 68%. Okay, so if you are seeing or reading MRI film, which says disc degeneration seen, it is okay to have disc degeneration. And that is why just reading MRI is not important. 
what is important is you correlate it clinically correlate it with the symptoms of the patient because 60% people anyway have disc degeneration at the age of 40 years these are the different age groups okay and it at the age of 60 years 88% such a high percentage have disc degeneration and when we talk about disc height loss at the age of 40 years 45% people have disc height loss and they were all asymptomatic i repeat okay at the age of 60 years 67% and when we talked about facet joint degeneration remember it is a systematic review meta analysis of 3 of 33 studies including 3110 people okay so even at the age of 20 years 4% people had facet joint arthropathy so early and at the age of 60 years 50% people had facet joint degeneration and at the age of 80 years which is expected also 83% people had facet joint degeneration okay so let's talk about the spondylolisthesis what does this study says all results are so surprising uh, isn't it so at the age of 30 years 5% people have spondylolisthesis and at the age of 80 years 50% people have spondylolisthesis that means if you are reading all those findings and mri films it might be an incidental finding might be it is already there so just knowing or just seeing those things are really not important what is important here is to correlate clinically let's go to the next slide so not only in this study but also in our clinical practice like we have treated more than 100000 patients in last 28 years and not only me we have trained more than 12000 physios in 52 countries even when we talk up to them about their patients even they also report almost the similar finding look at the disc bulge here isn't it so it's a huge disc bulge and you know this young patient came to our clinic with a, on stretcher okay people brought him to our clinic and his slr straight leg raise was only 10 degree and after 3 minutes of manual therapy his leg rose to 70 degree so in just 3 minute from 10 degree to 70 degree then that means the pain is not coming because of this disc bulge okay so it is okay to have these disc bulge it is the similar kind of surprising thing for us uh, what we seen in the study before and before i go to the next slide my next question from you people is those who said they are very comfortable or comfortable with reading the mri films my question from them is you always see in mri t1 weighted image and t2 weighted image so my question to you people is whether this image is t1 weighted image or t2 weighted image so you need to give one answer poll is coming on your screen now so identify this film as t1 weighted image or t2 weighted image what do you think what this image is and this is the result okay so 48% people said it is t2 weighted image absolutely good but you see if we combine together 28 plus 25% people they said either no idea or t1 weighted image which is the wrong answer okay right answer is it is t2 weighted image so this image is the t2 weighted image okay why we said it is a t2 weighted image because in t2 weighted image anything that has good amount of water will appear white 
So if you look at this MRI film, the thecal area or the spinal canal area is appearing white because of the presence of the spinal fluid in it. And that is why it is white. And if it is white, it is going to be T2 weighted image. And look at the disc also here, okay? This disc is also looking white, which is a healthy disc. But look at this disc, which is already out, excluded one. It is dehydrated, black colored disc, okay? And we will discuss more detail about it, don't worry. Let me proceed further. I'll teach you how to read all those things and how to correlate because just reading MRI is not useful. You need to interpret, you need to correlate all those things. So let's see, look at the next slide of the same patient. This is the axial view, okay, or the transverse section. Look at the size of the disc bulge here, okay? It's a huge disc bulge. It is the same patient. So you should be able to read MRI from the sagittal section as well as from the transverse section. And I'm going to teach you all of them. Next patient, you know, people do talk about that the disc once is out, it does not go back. I disagree with them. Look at that MRI film of one of the patient. Look at the size of the disc bulge. It is a big size, okay? And this MRI was taken in October 2017. And this patient, we taught the manual therapy, self-treatment, and then this patient continued self-treatment at home. And after one and a half year, we got the MRI done again. Look at the size of the disc bulge. It is much more lesser now. Okay? Much more lesser. That means Earlier people thought once the disc is out, it doesn't go back. Actually, it do go back. Okay, it goes back. Now do I get laser? Command L, right? Yeah. So it goes back. Look at this now. And look at the axial view of the same patient. Size of the disc bulge, transverse section. Okay, and after one and a half year, look at the disc bulge now. It's gone, it's dry, it's dehydrated, it shrink actually. Okay, so this suggests these changes are just a normal part of aging process. So if MRI says something is scary, don't be afraid. Learn how to read and interpret clinically. And this is what my topic is today. What I'm going to cover today is the slip disc, facet joint orthopathy, spinal stenosis, spondylolisthesis, multifidus, mechanical pain, and its clinical correlation, biomechanics, and clinical anatomy of the lumbar spine. What I will not cover is any pathological condition like infection, cancer, tuberculosis, any fracture or neurological condition. Because the physiotherapists do not treat those things, actually it is a red flag for our practice. So I'm going to cover what physiotherapists treat. Now, some of you might be wondering, oh my God, in just 90 minutes, so many things I'm going to cover and you're getting a little tense about it, don't worry. Just don't worry. You can be relaxed. It's not mushkil. It is mumkin. Okay? I'm going to use funny analogies or the cartoons to keep it simple, interesting, and to memorize easily. Yani, it will be very, very easy for you to understand. But make sure to watch it till the end. Because in the end, we will be combining all the dots. We'll be making it clear picture so that you can connect everything in the end. If you leave in between, you will not understand anything. Okay, so let me start the lecture now how to read MRI, understand, pick relevant finding and interpret and correlate clinically 
that too from physiotherapy point of view and before i go further let me tell you the disclaimer that it is only for educational purpose we are going to cover biomechanical perspective and those pathological condition will not be covered and before going for mri i'll be showing you few uh, clinical anatomy slides and discussing clinical anatomy so that you can recognize those structures in mri much more easily so it is important to pay full attention in the beginning in the middle and in the end of the lecture this lecture is going to be for 90 minutes okay so please bear with me it's my promise you will fall in love with me after this lecture okay so let's start now let's see how many of you answer correctly i am not going to put questionnaire here but you have to answer to yourself okay so what is it tell me the name of this structure yes the vertebral body and what is this the spinous process is we take care and this is the intervertebral space where you get the disc intervertebral disc here and this is the intervertebral foramen what comes out from here the nerve remember in thoracic and lumbar vertebra nerve comes below the vertebra okay while in cervical spine it comes above the vertebra and that is why you have eight nerves in cervical spine however you get only 12 nerves in thoracic and five nerves in lumbar spine okay so what is this called this is called come on this is called pedicle very good and this is the transverse process okay i'm just keeping my laser pointer here so that you don't get confused okay and this is the superior facet of the inferior vertebra and this is the inferior facet of the superior vertebra now this is the oblique view for in oblique view we don't do oblique view just to see the spinous process or the transverse process they are best seen in ap view or the lateral view oblique view we do to check the stability of the spine okay this is the facet joint facet joints are seen much more clear in oblique view in x ray also we do get oblique view and one dog we talk about there you know and we talk about this neck can you imagine a dog here can you imagine okay let me draw it for you so that is the scottish dog okay and this is the image you should be able to see in oblique view in case you are having any doubt about the stability of the spine and it is the pars articularis that get fracture and then this vertebra can slip forward and you call it spondylolisthesis or this vertebra can move backward you call it retrolisthesis because the facet joint which is working like a hook and not allowing this vertebra to for move forward or not allowing this vertebra to move backward so it is the facet joint which gives the maximum stability to the spinal column let's move a little more forward so that you can understand mri in a easy way and you can interpret so few more structures you need to identify and then we will be going to the mri so this is the vertebral body okay uh one minute please let me okay no i want to see only mine so one minute please hold on for me okay fine so probably you can see my image also so those so it is easy for you to fall in love with me all the boys okay <laughs> so this is the vertebral body here uh -huh. what do you call this one is the lamina okay 
that is the transverse process this is the pedicle i know sometime physios get confused they call this as lamina and this as pedicle actually this is the lamina and this is the pedicle i know sometime you find it very basic one but it is important to understand before we go to the mri this is spinal canal okay and that is the spinous process and that is the intervertebral foramen and this is which facet it is is it a superior articular facet or inferior articular facet yes you are right this is the superior articular facet look at the orientation of this facet joint they are facing towards each other okay so i often tell in india the superior articular facet is like boyfriend and girlfriend in india we have boyfriend and girlfriend also okay so boyfriend and girlfriend always looking towards each other so they are looking towards each other fine however the inferior articular facet they are looking away from each other and i know you got the answer they are like husband and wife always looking towards each away from each other fine so these are the structures we are going to identify in mri let's go to the next slide now mera mic ko mai camera band kar raha hu acha ho raha hai so we are going to identify certain structures here also okay so what is it this is intervertebral disc which ligament is it it is the anterior longitudinal ligament and this one is the posterior longitudinal ligament now look at the anterior longitudinal ligament it is very wide very strong and that is why you don't get the disc bulge anteriorly however posterior longitudinal ligament is very thin and small and and it is not there on the lateral side and that is why you get the disc bulge in posterior lateral side okay but here it is some other ligament which is very more important not the intertransverse ligament this is intertransverse ligament this is the capsule this is the interspinous ligament the most important ligament we need to see in mri is this ligamentum flavum which is there in the anterior surface of the sorry posterior sur surface of the spinal canal anterior wall of the lamina okay this is ligamentum flavum and it play a very very important role in back pain and we need to see this ligamentum flavum in our mri okay now please tell me i am going to ask you you need to recognize this structure okay this is a parasagittal view and you have to tell me what this structure is let's see how many of you give right answer so you need to tell me what this structure is is it a spinous process or inferior facet or superior facet or the transverse process or you're not sure about it tell me what structure is it you have to select any one so you have to tell me what structure is it i'm taking that slide again so you can see what structure is it okay here the poll comes 26% says spinous process which is absolutely wrong answer okay much good and 16% says it is the facet joint inferior facet of the superior vertebra which is the right answer nahi ho shuru camera okay start my video yeah and then 17% says superior facet no that is the wrong answer fine and then 10% says it is a transverse process again that is a wrong answer and 30% says not sure that's fine it's okay so only 16% said it is the inferior facet okay now it is important to understand that it is not a 
sagittal view it is a parasagittal view you know the difference between sagittal and parasagittal view i'll show you that okay so we take the cut like that imagine this is how the spine is and we are seeing a spine somewhere here okay so in mri you will see multiple lines like that so if you are seeing the white line like this okay if you are able to see the lines like that you know in mri they cut the slice they cut the slice like that 1 mm thickness slice like you cut the onion they cut the slice of the human body using magnetic image so they cut the transverse section they cut the coronal section they cut the sagittal section so you can imagine this is a transverse section okay so you get the cut like that so from front to back this is how the image will take you can see the animation here so at different depth you get different structures to be seen as you are going more and more deep you see different structures so slowly the mri taking the cuts from the spine and you see different structures at different depth here so that is the coronal section now look at the sagittal section okay so this is how they cut and this is where we saw that slide and that is why we didn't call it a spinous process we call it inferior facet of the superior vertebra let's see how and in animated video let's see how the uh, this uh, sagittal section looks like so this is how now watch this so as we are going deep we see different structures coming up and going there excellent okay and then we go for the axial view or the transverse section of the mri of the spine and this is how they cut and if you notice i have put multiple layers here but only one or two layer at this place so when they do the screening of mri they find out what is the problematic area so they take more image of the problematic area and less image for the purpose of scanning only so now you are able to see from bottom to top okay so imagine this is l5 and slowly we are going towards the l1 side and you will see how each vertebra goes there you are you are going deep into it okay let's see now so you cut section and then slowly you see different structures as you are going deep into it slowly you are moving in and then the in between you are able to see nothing in between two vertebral body but in mri you will see the disc coming there okay you will see the disc coming there in a moment we'll start showing all those things so this is a so this one was the parasagittal view okay this is a parasagittal view that's why you see the inferior facet of the superior vertebra okay so we'll we need to recognize certain structures in this and talk clinically so that when we see the mri we are able to recognize those structures and its clinical importance so let's start now so what is it this is the vertebral body above and the vertebral body below and what is it this is the intervertebral disc is the speed coming good okay and now you need to tell me that was the disc you gave right answer what is it this is the nucleus pulposus and what you get on the outer side is the annulus fibrosus and then this is the anterior longitudinal ligament we already saw in that model the anterior longitudinal ligament quite strong and i also told you that does disc does not get slip in the forward direction but it gets slip to the backward direction now see the reason because the anterior longitudinal ligament is so thick and the posterior longitudinal ligament is so thin here 
you can compare it okay and then look at the cartilage and plate this is the cartilage and plate okay which is working like a mother working like a barrier between non vascular structure and highly vascular structure disc do not have blood supply let me tell you it has blood supply only till first four years of the life till you are celebrating your first four birthday it has good blood supply and as you grow the blood supply get reduced and by the time you are 18 years only outer one third has the blood supply here and here and disc has no blood supply so how does disc get nutrition it get nutrition through this mummy okay i am not talking about egyptian mummy here i am talking about mother ma mom mom okay the job of the mom is to protect child if this disc is weak the nucleus pulposus may enter into vertebral body and you may see small nodes kind of thing in mri or in x ray you call it small nodes okay but if the disc is strong it's healthy it will not enter into the vertebral body there and also because i told you the disc do not have the blood supply so this through this cartilage and plate because of the movement between these two vertebral body the osmosis takes place okay the food materials travel to the disc and this is how the disc get nutrition but imagine if the patient is having pain and we tell the patient not to move then there will be no intervertebral movement and then the disc will not get nutrition okay so how disc will heal itself you are not giving any nutrition to the sick disc ill disc how it will heal them so it is important to move to vertebral body and this is what the manual therapists do by doing the accessory glide it helps you disc getting nutrition there so it is important and now over the time in mri you may see modic changes modic changes means the this cartilage and plate in mri when you see you will see sclerotic changes in mri sclerotic changes very intense uh, brightness there okay so those modic changes means now those pores are closed okay and the nutrition cannot travel and disc start getting dehydrated much faster if the disc get if the cartilage get sclerotic okay so this is the importance of the disc and the cartilage and plate let's move further so this is the inferior articular facet we already discussed this is the superior articular facet of the inferior vertebra sometime people do get confused and they call this as superior articular facet and this as inferior articular facet because they say this is superior and this is inferior okay but you name the facet as per vertebral body not as per relationship to each other fine in when you talk about relationship to each other you call this as superior and this as inferior but that is not the nomenclature nomenclature is you call the facet as per relationship to their vertebral body mosquitoes so this is inferior facet of the superior vertebra and this is superior facet of the inferior vertebra and this ice cream sandwich can you see the ice cream yes that is the cartilage and this is the joint space camera band kar dena because in the knee joint you know when you see the x ray mosquito you see the joint space in the knee joint right then why don't you see the joint space in mri also or in the x ray of the lumbar spine also 
it is the joint space which is the most important thing for physio not the disc and we will discuss about that not the disc it is joint space should be more important so you should be able to see the joint space also this is the pars articularis and if there is a fracture here okay this is working like a hook we already discussed if there is a fracture here this vertebra may slip forward fine or this vertebra may go backward so remember it is the facet joint which gives maximum stability to the spinal column not just the ligament or the capsule or the muscles fine what is it this is the nerve yes the exiting nerve root so imagine if this is l1 vertebra you get l1 nerve coming out and if it is l5 vertebra l5 nerve coming out so you call it exiting nerve root we will be talking about exiting nerve root and traversing nerve root now at this height which one will be the traversing nerve root the nerve which is up, supposed to come out from here is inside this and this will be the traversing nerve root at this height inside the canal okay so the nerve which is coming out is the exiting nerve root and the nerve which is in, still inside the canal and will come out from the next foramen is the traversing nerve root so this is the inferior capsule of the facet joint this is the superior capsule of the facet joint and what do you see these black dots are these are the blood vessels traveling and you will be able to see these black uh, blood vessels in mri also i will show you that okay so now i'm sure this image will make it clear between sagittal and parasagittal view okay so this was a parasagittal view that is why you were able to see the inferior facet of the superior vertebra not the spinal canal but the intervertebral foramen and look at this now you are able to see the spinal canal so this is a pure sagittal view and now this is the spinous process okay so those who answered the spinous process previously this is the spinous process you are going slowly deep into it look at my video now look at my video coming look at my face now so we are taking one image second third fourth fifth sixth seventh like this so when you are taking going in the center you are getting the spinal canal but when you are going on the side you get the facet when you go further more side you get the transverse process so this is pure sagittal view that is why you are able to see the spinal canal you should look for the size of the spinal canal here okay so let's see what those structures are this is spinal canal and you know it is t2 weighted image this is the spinous process this is the posterior longitudinal ligament look at the arrow okay this is the posterior longitudinal ligament and which ligament is it i told you it is very important ligament it is on the anterior surface of the posterior wall of a spinal canal yes this is the ligamentum flavum okay and you need to see the hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum we'll discuss more detail at at the right time look at the disc bulge it's a big disc bulge but now here we must discuss imagine a case and this patient comes to you and he is suppose he is having is the he is 40 years of age okay 40 and he is having this disc bulge and he is saying i am having back pain since yesterday now if you look at the disc the color of the disc is black 
that means it is a dehydrated disc and this is a t2 weighted image look at the other disc they are looking white that means they are hydrated disc but these two disc are black in color that means dehydrated disc you know the healthy disc is like a grape and the dehydrated disc is like raisin zabib okay zabib or the kishmish we call it now if you compress the grape it will come out fachak but if you compress the zabib will it come out no it won't come out so in this patient it is looking like a raisin the zabib and he's come that means this disc bulge is a old disc bulge not a new one if it was a new one the disc should have looked white in color but he is complaining pain since yesterday that means probably this pain is not coming because of disc bulge it is something else because this is a old disc bulge not a new disc bulge is that okay so clinical correlation is very very important you must take history of the patient since when you are having this pain yesterday one month one year so you, and then you look at the mri and now look at for the other disc also okay so this is black in color this disc is black in color look at this disc which is a healthy one hydrated one white in color and can you see this black line <coughs> this thin black color line you know what this thin black color line is over the time i told you about the blood supply of the disc so over the time disc starts getting degenerated and when disc get degenerated the cells die and when cell die the gases get released probably the nitrogen gases we are not sure about it but probably the nitrogen gas get released and because the disc is intact from all around those gases are not able to come out from the intervertebral disc space and that is why you are able to see the black color line this is the gas inside when you see the gas inside mri or in x ray even in x ray you can see okay so if that means slowly the disc has started getting degenerated and soon you will see this disc also as black in color soon not now so slowly dehydration started is that okay so let's go further now look at this white color as i said the white color means water so do you think is it a pus or a water or something wrong here actually not this is the place where the vertebral artery enters to supply the to give the blood supply to the vertebral body okay so and it is the excessive blood supply sometime you may see white color patch here okay and when you see white color patch here you must talk to the radiologist at that time because it could be anything but if it is just one vertebra and patient is not giving you any history of weight loss or loss of appetite or night pains all those red flags you know the contraindication if there is no such history probably again it is a hemangioma hemangioma excessive blood supply but if you see white patch somewhere here then probably this is something wrong with the patient and you must check the report must talk to the radiologist for any pus formation cancer tuberculosis anyway i will not go in more detail here because this mr this class is not about finding pathological things but to find the biomechanical things okay so let's proceed further so which one is t1 and which one is t2 weighted image this is the t2 weighted image this is the t1 weighted image look at the disc now look at the spinal canal first number batao 
look at the disc color so in t2 weighted image the disc look white while in t1 weighted image this look black look at the color of the vertebral body i'm sure you can appreciate it is little darker here and this is white here little bit white okay so let's proceed further now i know you people can comfortably read those sagittal section because it looks like x ray problem comes when you see the transverse section or the axial view you find it challenging some of you may find it challenging and the very important thing is we do not know whether it is left or right so we think we are standing behind the patient here i am sure you are able to see my laser pointer right so you think you are standing behind the patient and because this is your right side so this is going to be the right side of the patient and this is going to be the left side of the patient actually not this is not the case in mri this is the right side sorry this is the left side and this is the right side of the patient you are seeing not the mirror image you are seeing the actual one why do you get like that okay let me make it more clear for you so in mri the this is imagine this is the machine and this is how the patient goes in so this is the left side of the patient and this is the right side of the patient and you are watching from here actually you are watching from here so your right becomes the patient's left and your left become the patient's right so then you can take the sections here okay you put the sections here imagine this is the glass which is coming down on patient body and taking multiple slices okay so this is how you see from down so this become the left side and this become the right side is that clear now so in future don't make a mistake this is going to be the left this is going to be the right and nowadays many times they also mention l for left and r for right in many places they have started mentioning okay so we have already discussed this slice section which i am not going to spend further more time now you can imagine the transverse section or the coronal or the sagittal sections okay so this is the transverse section and we take multiple slices okay and we have already discussed this also so i'll go a little fast on these slides because we have already discussed those things fine and then you get the mri film in mri film you get one satellite window which is not seen here in satellite window they do mark these kind of lines and then you count the number of lines 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 okay and you want to go to that much deep imagine so you count the number of line this is number 7 suppose okay so if it is number 7 then you go to the slide 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 so you know how deep you are okay so these three line column are the t2 weighted image and these are the t1 weighted image okay so and in one window you will see number of those lines and you can count those lines and then you know how deep you are going don't worry i'll be showing you this in a zoom view also and you will realize slowly we are going deep inside the spine i will not be discussing at this time first i will show you few more slides and then we will start discussing those winding so slowly we are going deep into it okay so see now you are able to see the intervertebral foramen and the disc and you are going now you are able to see the pedicle now you are able to see the canal and then more canal wider canal further more wider canal and then slowly you are going out okay so you go more deep in now look at the sagittal section i was talking about the one satellite window this is the satellite window here okay and you can count the number of slides so you can say 1 2 3 4 okay so 1 2 3 4 so you know you are at this level and you are able to see the disc bulge here fine so you know which level you are talking about and then you go further high 5 6 7 so 5 6 7 
can you see the color is getting changed okay but you know why this is black and why this small whitish color why this is white here i'll show you don't worry and in some places you see the intervertebral foramen in some places you see the pedicle because you are at different height that is why okay so you have to imagine all those things through your through the knowledge of your clinical anatomy which i'll be discussing in a short while don't worry so let me show you this now look at this this is the nucleus pulposus now because we are absolutely cutting from the center of the disc and this is the top of the disc that means you are seeing the cartilage here and now this is the vertebral body here and look at the small nucleus pulposus this means it is getting dehydrated it is getting more black in color and less white in color okay so different heights will be talking about fine so this is how you see the transverse section again i'll be showing you all those slides one by one but we'll be discussing once we discuss the clinical anatomy part okay so right now we'll not discuss once we discuss the clinical part anatomy part it is you yourself will be able to recognize it i need not teach you at that time you will be able to see yourself okay so we are going from s1 to l1 so obviously this is the top of the s1 okay and then you see the cartilage cartilage and now this is the l5 coming up slowly you are going up okay so you will see the different structures look at the joint space now look at the intervertebral foramen so slowly you will see the different structure we will be discussing don't worry relax we will be discussing and then you can see the muscles also okay i will teach you how to recognize those things and clinical interpretation same slides will come again okay just little more clinical anatomy and we are done so this is the vertebral body and this is again the vertebral body and what you see here is the nucleus pulposus nucleus pulposus is made up of proteoglycan molecule and it absorb water when it is not under pressure so when it is not under pressure it absorb water and it stands vertically up and imagine there are millions and billions of molecule and they all stand vertically up so obviously height of the disc increase and then there are so many disc in our body in between each vertebrae so vertebra so you are 1.5 cm taller in the morning means when you get up in the morning you are 1.5 cm taller as compared to height measured after 2 hours within 2 hours you lose that height and you are shortest in the evening because this loses its water you get both vertebra comes very close to each other so obviously the facet joints also get closer so you should ask your patient when do you get more pain morning or evening if the patient says he get more pain in the evening it cannot be disc bulge though you see disc bulge in mri but it is still not the disc bulge because interdiscal pressure is minimal in the evening okay and the facet joints are closer that means it is the facet joint giving pain to the patient not the disc so patient should say more pain in the morning as compared to evening we call it diurnal variations okay so you should ask the patient when do you get more pain morning afternoon evening or night if the patient says he get more pain in the night then you should think of red flags you know you should think of red flags something wrong but if patient says more pain in the morning then you should ask one more question from the patient how long pain is stay and patient says pain is stay for 5 minute and then is fine again it is not the disc i told you it hold water up to 2 hours okay but patient is saying pain goes away in 5 minute then it cannot be disc means there is some inflammation going on in the patient body and the patient is moving around and muscle contract and relax and that local irritant get washed out and patient is fine so don't think of disc even if you see the disc in mri okay 
So this is the clinical correlation you have to do. You should ask the patient. So this is the annulus fibrosus. Look at the annulus fibrosus. It is very thick in the front and very thin behind. Look at the posterior longitudinal ligament there. Okay, and that's the cartilage end plate. We already discussed about the importance of cartilage end plate. Look at the anterior longitudinal ligament there and look at the posterior longitudinal ligament. And I already told you, disc is like a healthy grape. Healthy disc is like a grape and the dehydrated disc or aging or degenerated disc is like Zabib. Okay, so remember that. And you get the maximum interdiscal pressure, not when standing, but when you're sitting and bending forward. So when you're lying down, interdiscal pressure is minimal and it absorbs water as compared to when you get up in the morning and then you go to the washroom and then you take the shower or lift some weight and then you are risking your disc. So it is a good idea not to go to gym in the morning time. Then you are taking a very big risk. It is not a good idea to go to the gym in the morning. Also, it is a good idea to get MRI done in the morning because in the evening, disc is already dehydrated. It is already dry. So you may not get the correct image of MRI. Though it is, a, it is my idea, there is no research supporting that, but it makes sense. It is logical, okay? So I'm talking logic here. I'm not talking about evidence-based practice. I'm talking about physics. I'm talking about logic here. So it makes sense to me when interdiscal pressure is maximum, MRI should be done at that time. So you get the real image, real picture at that time. Okay. So we know the minimal interdiscal pressure as compared to standing. And then it is much higher in sitting and forward bending and highest in standing. Okay, now I'll teach you how to read transverse section, the axial view. So now I'm sure you should be able to see. Now this is the image we have taken from the intervertebral disc area in between two vertebral bodies. Okay, so that means you are able to see the disc. What is this? This is the nucleus pulposus comes. Okay, and that's the annulus fibrosus. In a short while, I'll be asking one question from you. Don't worry, hold on. This is the annulus fibrosus, this is the nucleus fibrosus. What you don't see here is anterior longitudinal ligament. Is my laser going with the same speed? Okay, and what you don't see here is the posterior longitudinal ligament. Okay, I'm asking the host and co-host to check out if my speed, my voice is getting coordinated. So that's why in between I'm asking them, okay? And this is another structure which I'll be asking later on. Now, can you imagine some structure like lips? Beautiful lips, okay? So can you tell me what these lips are? Okay, don't worry. I will also be doing some uh, animation. I have done some animation for you. For those who are not able to see the, or imagine the lips, watch it. Yes, the beautiful lips coming up. Okay. And then it is going away. Now I'm sure it is easy for you to imagine these lips. Okay. Now what those lips are, my question will be coming on the screen in a short while. And you have to tell me what this structure is. Is it a facet or a lamina or a pedicle or the transverse process or you're not sure? Tell me, what do you think? What a structure is it? You have to select any one out of this. Ah, oh, this is a beautiful answer. The 59% people said facet and only 11 said uh, lamina, 14% said pedicle, 10% says transverse process and 5% not sure. I'm happy, I'm glad. 59% people said it is facet joint. That's very good. So I told you, you being a physio, most important thing is the joint space, okay? So here also in MRI also, you should be able to see the joint space. Look at on the left side, no joint space seen. And look at on the right side, joint space seen. Now, like in the knee joint, 
medial joint line get collapse first in the lumbar spine it is the anterior joint line get collapse first so you are able to see the difference between the joint space here and joint space there there you see the less joint space as compared to the joint space seen behind it is because of the anterior shearing forces okay because in the lumbar spine vertebra wants to move forward because of the lordosis and that is why probably the anterior joint line get collapse first as compared to the posterior joint line and this black color thing is the cartilage my another question from you people i will not be launching poll don't worry but my question from you people is if the cartilage is rubbing with each other will that give pain to the patient if you are saying yes answer is no wrong the healthy cartilage has no nerve supply like when you are rubbing your teeth you don't get pain healthy teeth does not give pain they are not pain sensitive okay but over the time the cartilage develop degeneration there are cracks grow in those cartilage and then the nerve endings grow in those cracks and then cartilage become pain sensitive chondromalacia facet joint arthropathy and then rubbing of the cartilage will give pain to the patient so it is important for the physio to see the condition of the cartilage also okay so you should see the condition of the cartilage condition of the joint space and if there is some osteophyte formation will irritate anterior capsule here this is the posterior capsule of the facet and here you will see the anterior capsule and if there is osteophyte that will irritate anterior capsule and you may read in mri report anterior uh, your uh, face uh, the report may say osteophyte formation seen it is okay because anterior capsule has no nerve supply so even if you see osteophyte formation here it is absolutely fine to have it because the anterior capsule does not have nerve supply and it might irritate this ligamentum flavum also which is again okay because the ligamentum flavum also does not have nerve supply fine so it is important from physio point of view to see the joint joint space cartilage and the osteophyte let's move next okay so see the joint space now very well seen in this slide look at the cartilage this is the inferior facet that the superior facet this is the ligamentum flavum and joint space is reduced in the front and it is well maintained behind that the posterior capsule and this is one of the muscle and i'll be asking this question from you in a short while which muscle is it now look at the joint okay i'm sure now it is clear and this is how the joint get nutrition you know and this is the healthy cartilage okay and can you see those cracks the nerve ending grow in these cracks and then this become pain sensitive and this is how the sinoid fold move in and out okay this is how the anterior capsule and the sinoid fold move in and out so this is how the facet joint get nutrition facet your cartilage does not have blood supply so even if you give electrotherapy or the short wave and you try to increase the blood circulation cartilage still will not have nutrition because it does not have blood supply so again it is important to move vertebra it is important to give manual therapy so that the facet moves so that the vertebra moves and the cartilage get nutrition okay so this is the cracks in the cartilage okay then it become pain sensitive one look at the sinoid fold and this is why the movement is essential for adequate nutrition and adult disc and the cartilage get nutrition this is a study from professor james taylor who did a study and told us it is the facet joint which gives maximum stability to the spinal column not just the muscle or the capsule now when we this is this is the t2 weighted image okay so this is a t2 weighted image and you need to draw a line to check the alignment okay this is a pure sagittal view draw a line to check the alignment of each vertebra see the smooth line coming look at the smooth line okay can you see the smooth line yes now i'll show you another film ah 
Can you see this? And now if I draw a smooth line here, it won't be that smooth. Look at the crack, look at the irregularity and you call it spondylolisthesis. So not only behind the vertebral body, you can also draw a line behind the spinous process. So clinically, when you examine your patient, you may get a step deformity, okay? So check for the step deformity. But do you remember the study I showed you? The many people have spondylolisthesis. So if there is no history of trauma, there is no history of fall. And if it is only grade one spondylolisthesis, you may ignore it completely. Don't think about it. It might be again an incidental finding. You know the percentage of people have spondylolisthesis and they are still asymptomatic. So you need to again take the history, fine? Let's move further. So that is the step deformity, okay? So now I know there are many people from Egypt in this and what you see here is the pyramids, okay? From the Egypt, I know we all love those pyramids, the beautiful structure in the world, the one of the best amazing thing. And those who are not able to Im imagine, if you have not seen those pyramids, you can see it now. Okay, happy to see the pyramid now. So my question from you people is, what this pyramid-like structure is? Okay. Tell me, what is it? So the question coming on your screen now, tell me, is it multifidus or the erector spiny or you are not sure about it? Tell me, what is this structure? Which structure is it? Come on, let's see the result now. Okay, here comes the result now. Wow, I'm so much proud of you. So much proud of you. Yes, people from Middle East, they are always very, very intelligent. No matter whether it is Saudi or Emirates or Omanis or the Egyptians, they all are so intelligent. Multifidus, 57% people saying multifidus. And, but unfortunately, 33% people are saying erector spiny. No, dear, no, it is not erector spiny, it is multifidus. You want to show, you want to see the erector spiny? I'll show you an MRI. And sometime, you know, when they see erector spiny, actually they think these are the glutes of the patient. And I'll show you why, why. Okay, anyway, so being a physio, you must see the multifidus and the condition of the multifidus. Can you see those white patches here in the multifidus? However, this side you don't see those white patches. On this side you see those white patches. These white patches are the wasting, disuse atrophy of the multifidus muscle. And the multifidus muscle is attached with the posterior capsule of the facet joint. So it is not only helping as a core stabilizer but also helps in giving nutrition to the facet. And I'll show you how, how it works. Look at the multifidus muscle. It is a small muscle stabilizing to vertebral body here, okay? And look at the multifidus again, the same slide coming up. And this is the posterior capsule. And this is how the multifidus is attached. So when you bend forward, the fold goes in, synovial fold moves in. And when you come back, the multifidus should contract, pull the capsule back, and hence the synovial fold. But if you achieve extension because of erector spine muscle, not because of multifidus, because it is wasted, it will not pull the capsule back, and it will not pull the synovial fold back, and it will get impinged between two facet joints and the patient will get very severe pain because the posterior capsule has good amount of nerve supply. I repeat, the anterior capsule does not have blood uh, nerve supply. 
the posterior capsule has good amount of nerve supply and it get impinged if multifidus is not contracting at the time when it is supposed to contract so you being a physio you should look for the condition of the multifidus if it is weak if it is if it is degenerated and in t2 weighted image you see white patches i'll show you in the next slide look at the multifidus now that's the white patches okay and those who said erector spiny this is the erector spiny muscle and many times they think these are the glutes of the patient actually these are the erector spiny muscle and this is the multifidus muscle which is looking wasted here okay look at the vertebral body look at the spinal canal size look at the facet joint no space left look at the pedicle lamina lamina look at the pedicle here look at the spinous process look at the transfers process here okay i'm sure now you are able to see all those things and able to correlate so this is the multifidus now and this is the erector spinae muscle now another question coming up okay and we have already discussed this is structure actually can you can you see this v like structure okay can you see v for victory and you need to tell me what this v structure is you need to tell me what this v structure is is it ligamentum flavum or anterior longitudinal ligament or posterior longitudinal ligament or not sure tell me what structure is it fast let's see and then we start connecting all those dots and you will be able to read mri beautifully so what is the answer now let's see fast come on reply fast we have already discussed about it madam odomas come on reply fa wow now you people are with me i'm so much glad i'm interacting with very intelligent and dedicated group of physiotherapist 72% says it is ligamentum flavum which is very good only 4% says anterior longitudinal ligament and 20% says posterior longitudinal which is wrong and 4% not sure about it that's fine okay so let's go back to the previous slide so this is the ligamentum flavum okay sometimes people says the hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum same and i say it is okay to have hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum because hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum in itself is not a painful condition because it does not have nerve supply problem comes when it is so much hypertrophied that it starts compressing the structures in the front then there is a problem okay so if it starts compromising the structure compromising the spinal canal size then only this is a problem okay so you should see the condition of the ligamentum flavum also okay so just reading report will not help you because report will say hypertrophy seen you need to see how much hypertrophy and it is that much hypertrophy that it is compromising the canal size so you have to see the film just reading report will not help you fine so let's go further now if you can see the ligamentum flavum here look at the ligamentum flavum here look at the ligamentum flavum here this is the ligamentum flavum moving forward okay compromising the canal size see this this is the ligamentum flavum ligamentum flavum okay let me put laser here and actually you know this is a small disc bulge and this disc bulge would not have caused any pain to the patient but now it is a painful condition because from the front it is the disc and from the back it is the ligamentum flavum and look at the color of the disc it is black that means the disc bulge is an old disc bulge okay and now if you concentrate for the disc patient will not respond because you will go for extension exercise for the disc and this will not be useful you know i will treat patient for ligamentum flavum 
not for the disc bulge at this time because ligamentum flavum get hypertrophied in the old age and disc is already like a zabib in the old age so there is a disc bulge since long time and patient was fine now patient is growing old and then ligamentum flavum is getting hypertrophied and now it is started compromising the canal size so i will be going for flexion based exercise for this patient now hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum become important for me so just seeing disc bulge is not important just seeing hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum not important here also it is hypertrophied here also it is hypertrophied but it is not compromising the canal size so i am okay with this okay let's go further so this is what we have already discussed these are the structures not having the nerve supply okay and the uh, next so we have seen the nucleus pulposus we have seen the annulus fibrosus and the superior facet of the inferior vertebra inferior facet of the superior vertebra the lips the joint space the cartilage the multifidus the multifidus and the joint space and the ligamentum flavum now after coming from the egypt now let's go to the disneyland and meet the mickey mouse can you imagine the mickey mouse here the ears of the mickey mouse and the face of the mickey mouse and if those who are not able to imagine mickey mouse i'll help you with this is that okay now you are able to imagine the mickey mouse okay so now my question from you is this face face of the mickey mouse is what what is it now imagine if we are at the level of l5s1 okay so what do you think what it is i know some of you said spinal cord actually not spinal cord finishes at the level of l1 l2 so we are at the level of l5s1 so this is going to be the quadra equina okay and what is this ear of the mickey mouse these are the nerves okay and in the beginning i told you we'll be talking about traversing nerve root and exiting nerve root this is the traversing nerve root ready to come out from the next foramen and you want to see the exiting nerve root these are the exiting nerve root okay so these are the exiting nerve root and i told you i'll show you the blood vessels also these are the blood vessels now imagine if there is a disc bulge here what do you think which nerve will get compressed this one will get compressed not this one but imagine if the patient is complaining pain at l5 do you think it is coming because of the disc bulge no actually not yes but if the patient is complaining pain in s1 i will say yes it is the disc bulge plus i have to ask whether it is morning or evening if morning how long the pain is stay all those clinical correlation i am going to see fine so i am going to see the traversing nerve root and the exiting nerve root so just seeing disc bulge is not important clinical correlation is also very very important like if patient is complaining pain in sciatic nerve and disc bulge is at l1 level do you think the pain is coming because of the disc bulge no same way you have to see whether it is compressing the traversing nerve root or the exiting nerve root and is the patient complaining pain on the same side in the same segment in the same dermatome so you coordinate you correlate clinically let's now so the clinical anatomy part is over let me show you the mri films of the same patients one by one and you need to answer all the structures now now you know how to see those structures so let's see okay so now the arrow will be coming one after another and you have to tell me the name of those structures and the cl clinical correlation you have to see by yourself fine so this is black in color that means you are at the articular cartilage level sorry the cartilage and plate level because this is a t2 weighted image and the thickal sac is appearing white the joint space is appearing white that means it is a t2 weighted image and you are seeing dark black color that means it is the cartilage look at the cartilage here look at the joint space here look at the lamina here look at the spinous process here and you see the exiting nerve root okay so many things you are able to see look at the multifidus look at the erector spinae muscle so cartilage this is the superior facet of the inferior vertebra and the inferior facet of the superior vertebra 
Is it getting synchronized with my speech? Okay, and this is the joint space, the thecal area or the spinal canal area. This is the inferior facet, cartilage attached with the inferior facet. That is the lamina. And can you see that this portion is very thin actually. So there is a chance it may get cracked in older age if the patient is osteoporotic, okay? So there is a crack here and then vertebra may slip forward. This is the ligamentum flavum here, okay? See, this side is, it is quite hypertrophied as compared to this side. And if it becomes so much hypertrophied that it start compromising the spine, intervertebral foramen size, then the nerve will get compressed, okay? Look at the intervertebral foramen. That's the exiting nerve root. And that's the, here is the spinous process, multifidus, erector spine muscle, okay? So you, I told you I'll show you all the slides. So we'll go one, one, one by one, all the slides. So this is the top of the S1, and that is why you are able to see the vertebral body and the ala, and this is the traversing nerve root. This is the thecal sac area, and look at the facet joint. And if you notice on this, this side you are able to see less portion of ala as compared to this side. This means the sacrum is slightly tilted. So you have to see from physio point of view, okay? This side, the sacrum is slightly tilted because you are also able to see the joint space here, but there's no joint space seen here, okay? So you have to correct the alignment of the sacrum now. You have to see from physio point of view. The radiologist will never report those things. You have to see from the physics point of view, physical therapy point of view. This is the erector spiny muscle. Look at the L5. Again, you are able to see the intervertebral foramen on this side, but not on this side, because again, the vertebral body is slightly tilted, okay? It is slightly tilted. You are able to see the pedicle here, fine? So you have to correct that alignment. Look at the joint space nicely seen here, but not seen here. So all those clinical correlation you should be able to see now. Look at this, pedicle one side and intervertebral foramen on the other side. Look at the joint space difference. Let, let's go, we are going slowly higher, okay, towards L, L1. This is the multifidus. Look at the wasting of the multifidus here and the thickle sac area. Look at the disc bulge, okay? It is a posterior central. Sorry, posterior lateral. Had it been posterior central, there's so much space, still nothing will happen. But this is slightly posterior lateral and there is small chance that this now, the traversing now will get compressed. Why I'm saying small chance? Because I can still see some space available here. But then at the later age, this ligamentum flavor may get hypertrophied and start compressing this now. But then the disc is also getting dehydrated over the time. And this will get shrink. You remember the grape and the zibib? The disc will get shrink. So it is okay. Many times patients don't need surgeries and just with the manual therapy and exercise and flexion base or extension base exercise, depending what treatment you want to do and with the help of manual therapy, patient recovers in a beautiful way. Okay, so let's proceed further now. So that's a traversing nerve root. This is the intervertebral foramen. Now we are going to the higher level. Look at the disc bulge again. Look at the traversing nerve root again. And you can see the pedicle and now you see the intervertebral foramen. So this, this, this vertebra is tilted like that. And while the lower vertebra was tilted like this, so you have to correct the alignment. Maybe the pain is not coming because of the disc bulge. Maybe the pain is coming because of the wrong alignment of the vertebral body. So you have to correct those alignments, okay? Look at the exiting now. And here the exiting nerve root is still there, okay? So you need to see which nerve is getting compressed. And then you need to see what level you are checking. You have to see that window. Look at the multipedus. Okay, go back. Look at the pedicle now. Here the alignment is looking quite good. Look at the facet. And then look at the alignment. It is again slightly tilted. Here you see less. Here you see more. 
this is the exiting nerve root sorry traversing nerve root and the exiting nerve root look at the cartilage look at the spinous process and the ligamentum flavum and look at the diameter quite well quite good when maintained okay so intervertebral foramen and the joint space and the cartilage and the exiting nerve root now i'm sure you are able to imagine all those things so i'll go a little fast so this is the facet very nicely maintained at the higher level however at the lower level it was not maintained very well okay look at the ligamentum flavum and then the pedicle sorry the lamina that was and look at the higher level now can you appreciate the transverse process because the mri has taken a slice at that level that's why you are able to see the transverse process in other level it was not seen because the slice was not taken at that level so pedicle are seen quite wide here look at the transverse process okay and look at the healthy multifidus now the it is the same patient okay we are going slowly higher here at this level the multifidus is quite healthy while at the lower level it was wasted disuse atrophy was there and now let's talk about the sagittal view in sagittal view also you'll see the multiple slice and slowly you are going deep into the body okay you are going slowly deep into the body i told you we'll discuss this is the vertebral body you see here and this is the disc we are going slowly deep into it look at the disc now fine and you are able to see the intervertebral foramen here remember and you have to see if the disc is out here and compressing the nerve here is it getting synchronized now okay look at the vertebral body now look at the spinous process only small portion is seen and look at the posterior muscles okay erectus spinae and the multifidus also these are the fat after the muscles okay look at the disc bulge small disc bulge coming out and if you are able to see disc bulge at this depth that means it is going to be posterior lateral not central now the foramen is looking very neatly clear okay look at the nerve coming out beautiful one and now you have started seeing the nucleus pulposus also the whitish color earlier you were not able to see see because you were watching the annulus fibrosus you were not that much deep and now you are able to see the nucleus pulposus little white in color and the intervertebral foramen look at the spinous process now look at the pedicle now okay i'll remove my laser so there's no confusion and look at the intervertebral foramen and the nerve coming out from that foramen can you see that circle and in this look at the facet even the facet is looking very neat and clean and clear okay so slowly you go more deep and look at the spinal canal size look at the spinous process look at the disc now and i we already discussed that black color line and look at the whitish color look at the black color so you can i am sure now you can correlate and connect all the dots look at the canal size look at the ligamentum flavum now look at the disc and the canal size wide quite wide here look at the canal size very wide okay so you can see this is a small disc bulge but it doesn't make difference ligamentum flavum again spinous process vertebral body and look at the disc same patient but the color is getting changed as you're going deep so you have to see multiple level multiple slices you have to see and you have to know how deep you are and then correlate clinically okay look at the curve now so it is perfectly aligned no spondylolisthesis okay and slowly you are going out from the other side so if you entered from the left side now you are exiting from the right side of the patient and you see the same findings slowly so you see multiple slides and you should be able to appreciate all those things eventually so like this you will see multiple uh, films okay and you have to see all of them and correlate clinically so once you see all those things 
first now you have to correlate with the history of the patient you take the name age gender what happened what happened how happened what gives you more pain what gives you less pain what increase pain what decrease pain when do you get more pain morning afternoon evening night suppose if it is a old patient yes you don't expect a disc bulge because the disc is dehydrated but you expect a ligamentum flavum hypertrophy and if you if you get a young patient you don't expect ligamentum flavum hypertrophy but yes you may expect a disc bulge but in case he is not complaining morning pain don't expect a disc bulge then you go for the facet joint orthopathy okay if he complains night pain it could be some red flags go for detailed investigation ask few more question about the weight loss about the loss of appetite about the feeling uh, low about the low grade fever all those things you should be also asking okay and then you connect all the dots and make a provisional diagnosis and look at the mri check the segment check the dermatome check the myotome which area patient is complaining pain and check if it is a disc bulge is it at the same level where patient is complaining what is the color of the disc size of the disc bulge shape of the disc bulge is it compressing the same nerve is it the ligamentum flavum also coming forward look for the joint space between the facet joint look for the condition of the cartilage okay all those things and the condition of the multifidus and if it is multifidus is wasted patient will have back pain again and again because it will keep entrapping the tinuvial fold behind and patient will complain very severe pain so it is a clinical correlation also very very important and you see all those slides and then you interpret see the film by yourself recognize the problem correlate with the patient finding and check if the pain is coming because of those things otherwise maybe those findings are just incidental finding and you may ignore those findings okay so just don't read the report and google it read the report compare it with the signs and symptoms and correlate clinically with this thank you so much you people stayed beyond the time i know i said it is going to be uh, 90 to 120 minutes so i probably have taken 120 minutes thank you so much if there is any question or answer you may ask and before you go there will be a poll again one more question will be asking you about the feedback of this webinar so please fill that webinar and in case you are not able to ask because there might be so many questions in case you are not able to ask question you can ask question later on through my email deepakapri@gmail.com or you can go to our website capriforphysio.com or you can also whatsapp me the your question this is my whatsapp number okay you can ask those questions on whatsapp also